never gets old. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is March 21st, Wednesday slate. We've got eight games, supposed to be seven, but special thanks to the Pelicans' uh, leaky arena last month. Uh, we've got eight Pelicans in the midst of a back-to-back-to-back, -back -back, which should just be outstanding for them. Um... No data, uh, the Pelicans um, Pacers game isn't in the 5x5 five five data right now, so I'll have to skip that one uh, from a 5x5 five five perspective when we, uh, when we get to it. But eight games, um, let's just dive in. First game up, uh, Cavs hosting the Raptors. Cavs with a 112.75 implied total. They are one-point underdogs at home against the Raptors, which is... Interesting. Uh, the Kevin Love is a minimum salary player experiment is over. Back up to 7,300, so no need to exploit that one. Uh, first up, I'll uh, we'll take a look at Braun, who's 12-8 on FanDuel and 11-7 on DK. He's got four straight games at 70 fantasy points. I'm going to use some creative rounding here, but, you know, 70, 70, 70, 72. Uh, just on an absolute tear. Um, I would imagine he would not be highly owned tonight, but there's not a ton of stud out there. Uh, this is obviously a very difficult matchup for Cleveland. Uh, defensively, Toronto, exceptional. Um, I can't imagine using LeBron in a lot of GPPs. It's going to be really hard for him to clear, you know, any sort of value. Uh, Raptors are tough. The only way that this goes different is if Braun is like, you know what, today's going to be the day that I uh, let Toronto know what's what. I don't necessarily see that coming, uh, so I'll generally be avoiding Braun in my GPP lineups today. After that, it's just sort of a mess. Uh, Tristan Thompson is questionable, so that there's, you know, a couple extra minutes back in there. I've got Love set for 25 minutes. Uh, I think that he'll probably take a little bit to get, just get his legs back. Um, so the only guys that I'd really be looking at on FanDuel, uh, Jeff Green to an extent. I know he's probably going to start getting pinched a little bit for minutes if, as people start coming back. Um, but at 4700 I think there's some upside in his price. Uh, I'd be willing to take a look at George Hill, although he terrifies me. Um, but 4200 you know, again, for a GPP, I'm willing to take that flyer. You know, if he can get up into that 25 range, 26, which he's done twice in the past two weeks, uh, you can be a little happier about that. Um, and then finally, Jordan Clarkson, 4600 uh, If Rodney Hood is out, I have him in right now, but if Rodney Hood is out, I'll let Clarkson a little bit more. Uh, we won't be seeing Kyle Korver uh, today. Uh, unfortunately, his brother passed away, so um, he might be out. Uh, there, there's no telling how long he'll be out right now. Um, so uh, best wishes to the Korver family. I'm, I know you're not listening to this, but it's really a bummer. Um, there's not a ton to like on DK. Uh, I think everybody's priced just a couple hundred dollars too high, uh, as you can tell by all those Ds. Uh, it's like a... Hooters restaurant in here. Haha. <laughs> it's too early for that shit, man. I haven't had any coffee. I'm on the water kick in the morning. Still trying to stay hydrated. So, yeah, uh, I don't really like much of the Cavs here. Toronto's too good on D, and uh, I don't like the pricing. Flyers on Jeff Green and George Hill. It's about as far as I'd like to go with it. We'll go to Toronto. Uh, Raptors. One-point favorites in Cleveland. Uh, third highest implied total on the night. Now, the Raptors have good matchups here. Uh, point guard, small forward, and power forward, all great spots. Uh, DeRozan should come in fit as a fiddle, um, taking last night off. 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Uh, I'd, I'm pretty interested in DeRozan tonight. Uh, getting being, being able to get him under 8,000 on FanDuel is always great. Uh, has the ability to just go bananas, and it's not as if Cleveland's any good. I like Cly uh, Kyle Lowry as well. Uh, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Uh, point guards just roast Cleveland. 
I mean, everybody sort of just roasts Cleveland, but point guards in particular uh, roast Cleveland pretty well. No reason to think that that wouldn't be the case. Um, it's not as if I'm worried about George Hill's defense. Uh, and then finally, Serge Ibaka, uh, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Um, I think there's a, a very strong likelihood he has a good game. Uh, Kevin Love being back, it's, it's not a, it's not like that's going to be uh, the anchor that the Cavs defense needs. Raptors with the number one matchup, a power forward today. So I'm going to roll the dice on a decent game coming out of Ibaka. Uh, you're looking for a minimum of 27 out of him. Uh, and he hasn't had any games where he's just gone bananas, but he's been steady in the mid-20s. And I think that a matchup against the Cavs is something where you could see, you know, a big 6X or 7X type game. Um not the craziest slate either, so you know he's definitely a guy I'd like to focus on. I um, Valanciunas at seventy five hundred is a tough ask for me with the way his minutes have been trending. Nineteen in the last one, and that's without DeRozan and without Van Vliet. Uh, I do have Van v- Van Vliet playing here. Um, keep an eye on that. Forty five hundred and forty four hundred. Uh, I don't think he's really super playable unless you know, like, Lowry is out. Uh, so my focus will be on the quote-unquote big three of the Raptors, DeRozan, Lowry, and Ibaka. And, uh, you know, prioritizing them, I would say... Man, that's tricky. Um, I will have more DeRozan than Ibaka and then Lowry. But that's not a testament to how I feel about Lowry. I'm going to have a lot of all three of them. I think that they're a good, that's a good group to stack in some ways. Can we go to Philly? Ugh. Philly hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. There's not a line out yet. Um, I've got Sixers favored by 10 at home. Uh, I think we're going to want to keep an eye on this. This seems like a perfect opportunity to tell Joel Embiid to uh, take a break for the day. If Philly can't go out there and beat the Grizzlies without Embiid, then they're probably not that good of a team to begin with. Um, But we've got Ben Simmons at 10-1, 9,000 on DK. Let's change the team. I wish I could change that with my brain. Uh, Simmons, back-to-back 55-point games uh, is nice. Um, I don't really like him here in a game that's probably going to be slower than normal. Uh, It's not exactly, you know, Memphis isn't exactly running up and down the floor with reckless abandon, especially if, like, Gasol is playing. Uh, So I don't really love Ben Simmons. I don't really love Embiid, although Embiid on three of four games in the 50s, one in the 60s, um, but I just, I have a sneaky suspicion he might not play tonight, or at least that's what I would do, Um, but I'm not going to make my bed grabbing guys against Memphis, it's sometimes a scary proposition. Uh, After that, I don't necessarily like much on Philly. only good matchup they have is really at shooting guard. Uh, Redick, 4,700 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. I mean, you're looking for 25-plus out of Redick. He has had two games in the 30s in the past two weeks. Uh, so, you know, if you want to use Redick in a GPP, I think that's reasonable. Um, Saric at 6,200. You know, he's had a couple games in the 30s, which is what you're looking for, but he just so rarely blows up. Uh, it's not really for me. Um, I can see having a little bit of Covington, but all in all, I just don't have a ton of interest in Philly. Now, Memphis, uh, likely to be 10-point underdogs at home. Right now, I've got everybody that could be in, in. Um, so you'll see Tyreek, who I expect to play. Uh, Gasol, who should play. Um, Chandler Parsons, who cares. Uh, 
And with all of that in, I, I mean, really, the only thing that I would want to look at would be Gasol, or sorry, uh, would be Evans. Uh, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Um, if everybody's back, 8,000 is a reasonable spot for him. The two games that he has played since he's been back, he's been at 40 or higher. Uh, it, like that, That's basically it for me. I'm not entirely sure I want much Jamichael Green if everybody's on the floor. Andrew Harrison at 5,800 is, in my opinion, too expensive if Evans and Gasol are on the floor. So keep an eye on it to see if there's any news. But if Evans and Gasol um, are expected to play today, then the only guy that I really want to have any part of would be Tyreek. <sighs> God, I hate the Grizzlies so much. Brooklyn Nets. 111.25 implied total, which is fifth. They are one-point favorites at home against the Charlotte Hornets. What a world. Uh, Not the best matchup. Again, Charlotte's pretty solid on D. I'd like to see. I don't know how good they are um, when Batum is off the floor. Probably should have checked that two nights ago. Okay, so 44th percentile defense overall when Batum is off the floor. Forty-six. Okay, no real difference to team defense with him off. I did put him off, right? Yeah, off comes first. Um, so, yeah, uh, nothing spectacular from a matchup. It's actually... Probably more negative than positive. Get a sip of water here. Um, <clears throat> we've got Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who's just been playing out of his mind in this two-week stretch. Uh, three games in the 40s, a 37, a 33. Um, he's at 7,300, 6,800 on DK. It makes me a little nervous now that his price is uh, a little bit higher, but. I don't have any pr- real problems having him. Uh, you know, just be aware that the upside that existed a week ago doesn't exist anymore. Um, D'Angelo Russell, 7,400 on FanDuel. Two games in the 40s in the last two weeks stretch, one at 39.5, which is close. I'd be okay with him. And the grades seem to, to, to show that as well. Then Damari Carroll, three straight games in the 30s. He's at 5,800. Uh, he's at five of seven games in the 30s. Um, with a salary at 5,800, I think Damari Carroll would be my favorite play of anyone on Brooklyn. He's got enough uh, wiggle room in his salary that he could really provide um, some, uh, some value. After that, I, I'm not much of a fan of Crab or Dinwiddie or Levert or uh, or Jared Allen. Um, Dinwiddie on DK, you can you might be able to talk me into, but he's just been not spectacular lately, and I don't really want to run into that much Charlotte. So I think Carroll would be my main focus, and I'd be okay uh, having uh, Hollis Jefferson and D'Angelo pop up. Now for Charlotte, uh, obviously the Hornets have a great matchup at point guard, power forward, and center. Um, Centers have been eating on Brooklyn all year. Uh, Pricing is a little weird, so we're going to need to talk about that here. Um, Kemba, 8,700 on both sites. Went for 51 uh, two nights ago. You're going to need that again, and there's still not a ton of upside, so I don't love Kemba in GPPs. Uh, He's fine. um, But I think he's probably a relatively safe cash game play tonight. The game should be close. Uh, Jeremy Lamb now at 6,600. As expected, his salary jumped through the roof. 
went from 4,800 to 6,600, so up 1,800 uh, since the last game. I, I don't have very much interest in him. He's fine on FanDuel, uh, but all of the upside of the price that existed last time is sort of gone. Now he's just a functionally solid guy at 6,600. Now at 5,400 on DK, uh, I'm way more interested. Uh, I think he grades out really well. And I think that you can still get one more game at a land before a price correction. Uh, Dwight, 8,300 and 8,400. Uh, terrible game in his last game against the Sixers. Damn, my nose is itchy. Uh, but has had two 60 point games in this last two week stretch. Um, you know, everybody and their brother knows that Brooklyn's bad against centers, so. He's, he should be popular, or at least relatively popular, for the slate. And uh, I agree with it. Uh, there's no reason to think that things are going to change now. Um, as long as Dwight is going out there with a motor, uh, I'd be interested in him against Brooklyn. Those are really the only guys that I have any interest in on this squad. Um, Marvin Williams in a GPP would normally be okay for me, but Brooklyn actually really good at taking away the three, so that doesn't necessarily fit Marvin Williams' game. I'd be a little bit more inclined to use MKG as a punt if I needed to. Now to Miami. Uh, Heat, I have a six point six and a half point favorites at home. This line does not exist. Uh, no white side, no Wade. Um, the 107.7 fly implied total that I gave them would be 11th. Uh, I have a lot that I like here for the Heat. Um, even though it's a, a relatively "quote unquote" tough matchup for point guards, uh, Dragic at seven thousand on Fanduel looks great to me. Um, three straight games, right at the uh, value mark for him. Uh, I think he's a very safe cash game play tonight. Uh, Josh Richardson back up to six thousand, uh, back up to getting the minutes that make sense. Um, I'm okay with him there. Uh, fifth best matchup for small forwards. I generally like Richardson anytime he's at six or below, and I think he's going to get minutes. So I'm, I'm more than okay having some Josh Richardson here. Uh, Wayne Ellington, Tyler Johnson, I don't have any problems having either of those guys. I think they're both solid values. Um, if I had to prioritize one over the other... It would probably be probably be Wayne just because of I think he he's more likely to get a solid allotment of minutes. Uh, I think Tyler Johnson is a better GPP play just because you know there's games where sometimes he'll play just like 35 minutes and it's just wild. And then I'm gonna run out uh, the three-headed monster of James Johnson, Bam Adebayo, and Kelly Olynyk again. Uh, I'll have a, a lot of James Johnson at 5,500. Um, coming off the 58-point game, he had 47 a couple nights ago, 39 a couple nights ago. All of those are just monster, monster values. Price isn't going up, but same opportunities are still out there. Uh, I have no worries about the Knicks D, so I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of James Johnson, a very solid amount of Bam, who has the ability to put up some big games, but that 4300 price tag is what you're looking for. Uh, the Heat just look way better on FanDuel. And then Kelly Olynyk, coming off the 60-point game, uh, he's had a couple 30-point games, but now that he's at 6,000, uh, that limits the upside. So he's the guy that I would have the least of in GPPs from Miami. But tons to like. Uh, I'm going to have most of the Heat tonight in lineups. Now to the Knicks. Um, why do I feel like I'm not recording? Now I'm recording. Oh God, dry air, man. I need a humidifier. Oh my God, that's terrible. Not the water. The Knicks. Knicks 101.25 implied total, which would be 14th. I don't think that I've ever seen more D's and F's, black and red. I don't think that I need to go on any further. Miami's good on D. It's going to be a slower game. Uh, if you want to use Tim Hardaway in a GPP, go ahead. Otherwise, 
I don't want a single bit of this. Their minutes rotation has been really weird. Like, they've been playing... How many guys played here? 13 guys played here. <clears throat> you know, 12 here. I don't want any part of the Knicks. I'm good. To the Bulls we go. Um, I have a really good idea here. If I reference this cell, will that work? Perfect. Should have been doing that the whole time. Okay. That makes me so happy. Uh, Bulls. <clears throat> oh, sorry. 106.5 implied total. He's 12th. They are 9-point underdogs at home against the Nuggets. Uh, still no Chris Dunn. Still no Zach Levine, most likely. And still no Lowry Markkinen. Um, so for me, I'm going to be looking at campaign again. Uh, Two games in the mid-20s. Uh, he's at 5,500 and 5,300. I do want to knock him down just a little bit, but I still really like him. Just want to take the edge off of him a little bit. Uh, it's a good matchup. Denver's not very good on D. So I'm more than okay with having some campaign. Uh, I'm okay with using Felicio as a bit of a punt. 4,100 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. Uh, I think Portis can have a good game. He's had four straight in the mid-30s, which is right around value. Had one game at 43, uh, which would be a nice boost. I'd say that Portis is a relatively safe cash play. Um, Antonio Blakeney is not necessarily my favorite guy in the world, but again, for value, I'm fine there. I'm fine with Noah Vonley. Uh, I think the Bulls are a great squad today for making your lineups work. Lots of guys at a low-ish salary uh, that I think um, could help make some uh, higher profile guys fit in. You know, take your chances with campaign, pay up somewhere else. Take your chances with Felicio, pay up somewhere else. Take your chances with Vonley, pay up somewhere else. Uh, they offer you a little bit of, I don't know, quality increase. I don't know what I'm saying. Just use some of the bulls as punts. <laughs> God, complicate things sometimes. That's what happens when you do this stuff. It's still dark outside. Uh, you don't really have the brain flowing like you'd like it to. Um, yeah, that's it. Use a bunch of the bulls. In moderation. Uh, it's like anything else. It's like salt. Ooh, I don't have to type it down here. See, that's going to take a while. I'm going to fuck that up every time. See, that's so much better. I'm such a dummy. Ugh. So, Nuggets, nine point favorites in Chicago. Um, Wilson Chandler, 6,100. Uh, look, if you want to use him in a GPP, I get it. This is a guy that's gone for 40 twice in the past week and a day. But he also has the ability to go out and put 19 on the board, which will crater you. Uh, so buyer beware on Wilson Chandler. Uh, will Barton's price is up quite a bit now with Gary Harris out. 7700 on FanDuel. Uh, we went for 48 in um, 46 minutes. Not really the best game if you take the minutes into account. Uh, I don't really have a ton of interest in him. Um, I think he's probably fine for cash. Uh, but I think the the upside in the GPP is relatively limited now. Sort of the same for Jamal Murray, 7,500 and 7,100. The only saving grace here is that Denver's got an ex exceptional matchup across the board. Um, guys I'd probably want to be looking at, and I need to knock Millsap down again. Just too high. Not playing at that same sort of level. But... I'll use Chandler, Murray, Jokic, and Millsap in GPPs. Um, Jokic really should do whatever he wants. Back-to-back uh, 50-point -back games, 68 in the game before that set. Uh, a couple other 55s throughout the time. Uh, feels about as safe as it gets and uh, has the ability to really turn it on for a bigger game. So 
I like Jokic. I'll have a decent amount of him uh, after that. I'll have some Paul Millsap. I'll have some Murray and Chandler and probably a limited amount of Barton. That's all on FanDuel. Uh, Barton looks a little bit better at 7,000 on DK. Um, but, you know, you want to have uh, guys on Denver. Denver's fighting for their lives. Started off this road trip really bad. They need these wins. Uh, so they're not going to dick around, um, which makes me really think that, you know, their starters could have a really, really good line since there's not much difference between the Bulls starters and the bench. They're all just atrocious. Milwaukee. 115.25 implied total, which is second. I did it again. Damn it. <laughs> Knew I was going to do it. Did it the first time, too. Uh, they are four and a half point favorites at home against the Clippers. Clippers on the back to back. Um, we've got Giannis at 12,000, 11 1 on DK. Uh, I'm going to like him a lot. I think he's probably my favorite stud now that I'm seeing everything. Um, just a little nervous about AD, but we'll get there. Uh, but I'm willing to take a flyer on Giannis here. Um, I have some interest in Middleton and Bledsoe as well. I think this is a great game for, uh, the Bucks. It seems like, you know, with that number two implied total, there's some value to be had. John Henson at 5,000 is pretty interesting. Um... He only got 20 minutes in the last game, but when he's playing up in the 30s, uh, doesn't have much problem getting to 25. So I think that, especially if Tyler Zeller, if Tyler Zeller ends up being out, they're going to need someone to deal with DeAndre. So you should see a good bit of Henson. Uh, I think Henson is a really nice GPP play. But I'll prioritize Giannis. Uh, I like that Bledsoe's salary is slowly going down. Um... I actually prefer Bledsoe to Middleton here tonight. Uh, we'll call it a revenge narrative going back to the Clippers. But I want to have a good bit of Giannis, Middleton, Bledsoe, and Henson tonight. Uh, I think that the Bucks are in a very nice spot. Almost. For the Clips, uh, four and a half point underdogs in Milwaukee, seventh highest implied total. Uh, they're on the back to back, third game in four nights. Um, just a, a rough game all around outside of uh, DeAndre. And DeAndre went crazy in the first half, too. But not good at a Lou Will, uh, whose salary went down again. Um, so I'm going to say a lot of the same shit I said yesterday for the Clippers. I'm perfectly okay with having some Austin Rivers. Uh, be prepared to be let down. Uh, he had a rough shooting night last night. And now they're on their way to Milwaukee. Um... I'm okay with having Rivers uh, at 7,500. I'm okay with having Tobias Harris. Uh, two back-to-back -back not awesome games makes me think that Tobias Harris could have a, a decent one tonight. But once again, I'm probably going to run out a solid amount of Lou Williams. I think that, you know, Clippers are still playing for their lives. Uh, and Lou's going to catch a heater one of these times. Um and at 7,000, like, just two games ago, he went for 39, which is, you know, above value at this 7,000 price point. Uh, he can very easily go for more than 39 as well. So I'm going to have a nice amount of Lou Will again. Uh, I definitely want to have some DeAndre Jordan, though. Uh, coming off the 41-point game yesterday, uh, he has gone for 65 and 50 in this stretch. And he's only at 7,700. So DeAndre is going to be one of my higher-owned centers. Um, and then Montrez Harrell, um, I think people chase that 44 a little bit too much. Uh, it's hard to do in, in the amount of minutes he gets, but worth a flyer, especially against the Bucks. Um, so my priorities will be Lou Will and DeAndre. After that, I'm, I'm fine having a, a solid amount of Austin Rivers and Tobias Harris, and I'm cool with using Harrell in uh, a bit of a punt situation. Now, Pels and Clippers, or, yeah, Pels and Clippers, Pels and Pacers. Uh, this is the makeup game for the leaky roof or leaky cord or whatever was leaky. Uh, Pelicans, one point favorite at home against the Pacers. Uh, AD, oh, I did it again. I hate myself. I'll get used to it eventually. 
Um, I would expect Drew Holiday to play, but definitely need to keep an eye on it. He's probably a little too expensive on FanDuel, but 7900 on DK is definitely one to explore. Same for sort of AD at 11.5 on DK. Uh, he looks pretty good there. Um, I'm really nervous about AD in this stretch of games. This is the third game. It's his fourth game in five nights. They're going to have six of seven because they also play tomorrow. Uh, that's just brutal. Um, he went out for a little bit last night. Um, I'm going to try to avoid him a little bit. It, it just makes me nervous. He's not someone that's good with a lot of miles. Uh, so be prepared to be scared of AD. Obviously, he can go crazy. Obviously, he can put up 70. Um, but I think there's way more risk than reward for AD tonight. And then I don't really love Drew. Um, unless he's out, I don't really love a ton of the rest of the team. You can talk me into Rondo, and you can talk me into Miritich in small doses, but for the most part, I'm just not digging the Pacers because, or the Pelicans because of how much they've had to play lately and how much they're going to have to play even again tomorrow. <laughs> Pacers, one point underdog in New Orleans. Um,. We've got Darren Collison at 6,100, 5,500 on DK. He's back to getting his full allotment of minutes. Uh, Pelicans have not been good against point guards this season, so I I really like Collison tonight. I like him in both cash and GPPs. Uh, I think 30 is a very realistic floor for him. Went for 37.8 in his last game. You'd be stoked about that, and I see even more upside than that um, at this current price. And I feel the same sort of way about Oladipo. Uh, 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. More than happy to have uh, a decent amount of him. I think that they're just in a really good position to uh, take advantage of the Pelicans' tired legs. Um, Thad Young went berserk in the last one, went for 41. Also has a 39 and a 34 recently. Uh, you can only play him in GPPs. Um, he also has a 6, an 11, a 15, a 13. So if you want to use him, GPP only. You can't run him out there in cash, but I'd entertain it. I think that I just like a lot of the Pacers tonight just because of uh, the negative situation for the Pelicans. Um, Miles Turner would be somebody that I'd be very interested in. Uh, 6,800 on FanDuel. Uh, He'll be one of my, like, slightly above uh, average-owned centers tonight. And again, it's just to take advantage of the Pelicans' lack of rest. 6,800 is too low for him. Uh, he's got a 38, a 43, and two more 38s just in this last two-week stretch, all of which would be above value for him. Then finally, the last game, the one I'm interested in the least, which is perfect. The San Antonio Spurs, 104 implied total, 5-point favorites at home, uh, 13th highest implied total against the Washington Wizards. Um, I hate the Spurs with a raging passion. I'm not really passionate about the Wizards either. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, back-to-back 54. Five plus point games, but he's 9,700 on FanDuel. Um, I just can't do it. There's too much downside. He's he's fine in a GPP. I can't imagine rostering LaMarcus Aldridge in cash. Uh, and then the rest of it is just a mishmash of dudes. You never know what you're going to get. Kyle Anderson's minutes have been all over the place. In the last two week stretch, he's played 23, 14, 34, 22, 15, 26, 33. I can't, I can't deal with that stuff. If you're going to be using San Antonio guys, they're all GPP only. Um, you can't touch any of these dudes in cash with any sort of trust. Uh, I'd like to say that I like DeJounte Murray, but 6,300 is kind of terrifying. If you want to take some of these guys as flyers, uh, feel free, uh, but the Spurs are not the team for me. And then finally, we've got the Wizards. 
99 implied total. Tied for last with the Memphis Grizzlies. They are five-point underdogs in San Antonio. Um, Beal at 7,600 is something that I'd be interested in in a GPP. Uh, he went for 60 a few nights ago, well, a full week ago. They're, they are very well rested. So I think that I'd like Beal here um, as a GPP guy. I don't have a ton of interest in Otto Porter at 7,300. Also just a GPP play for me. Uh, and then Markeith Morris at 5,600. Um, I think he's actually a really solid GPP play. He's had four games in the mid-30s, which would be a very, very nice value for him at a $5,600 price point. But this is not a great game for fantasy Uh you really only want to use these guys as flyers and GPPs. So let's take a look at what pops up on the optimizer. I will be going live tonight um, at 6, so that should be a, a nice fun live stream for us. Let's bump up the rando. And... That's a lot of Lance Stevenson. Holy balls. Do I need to look at that? <sighs> Played 30 minutes and 29. Yeah, if he's going to get that sort of time, I've got him in for 23 minutes here. Lance Stevenson is very nice on FanDuel at 4,100. Very much worth a flyer. So I'm going to go back to the well with Lou Will. Um, let's take a look here. I'm going to start with DeAndre. I know that I can get James Johnson then. Um, I'll safely grab Campaign, and that should allow me to fit in a couple other guys that I like. Um... I like just about all of this. I would probably step down off of AD to move up off of Blakeney, but Payne, DeRozan, Lou Will, Damari, Lance, James Johnson, DeAndre, I can entertain that. What, are, what, do, what do some of these look like if I rotate that out? At, like I would probably do George Hill here over Blakeney. Um, doesn't seem like I can get all the way down to someone, or all the way up to someone better. Uh, huh. I would look, I would definitely do something like Bledsoe and Rondé Hollis Jefferson too. Um, lots to like here though. I, I think it's going to be really fun to build some FanDuel lineups today. And then finally, we'll take a look at DK. <laughs> Gotta wake up. That water is so cold. So cold. Mm. All right, bump up randomization. Let's see what we get. Yeah, lots of Jeremy Lamb, which is to be expected on DK with that price. What was uh, Josh Richardson's price on DK? Yeah, 5,300. Okay. So let's take a look at Lamb, Payne, Richardson, AD, Darren Collison. I think that's a great start. Um... Probably getting too many guys that I shouldn't own. But I think right here is something that could be decent. Collison, Richardson, Lamb, 
Abaka, DeAndre Jordan, campaign AD, Noah Vonley as a as a punt at the flex spot would be probably my favorite out of everything that I see here. But I think it's going to be a really great night for builds. I think there's going to be a lot of unique lineups out there. I'm anxious to see what the ownership looks like. So that's it for me. Uh, like I said, I will be back tonight at 6 for a live stream. Um, I will be back tomorrow morning for the normal video. Another live stream Thursday night. Um, yeah. Lots coming up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments or on Twitter or on Reddit. Like and subscribe would be great. And uh, I will talk to you guys uh, in 11 hours. Bye-bye.